Hello everybody, Pastor Ben here, coming at you today from my office here at the church offices where I've been meeting with the rest of the staff all morning as we've been talking about the current situation and how we are going to continue to reach, teach, and train people for Jesus Christ. In fact, we've been praying that in the coming weeks, we'd be able to do more of that than ever before. Uh, more of that. Uh, th that's what we want to do. That's what we're going to keep working hard uh, to do. I, I do want to bring you some updates uh, today, though, here on Tuesday, March the 17th. And that is right now as we are looking at our Sunday morning gatherings and Awana on Thursday night and youth group on Wednesday night, all of the regular meetings at the regular locations will be suspended for this time being. And uh, even all three of the places where we do those events, normally we are not able to go and meet as we normally are at those locations. And as we figure out what's next, we, we are also considering what we are being told by our, our government, even our president this morning and yesterday, really encouraging everyone across the nation to limit you know, large gatherings of of people. And as we've prayed, we've talked together as a staff and even been consulting some of the life group leaders and uh, even talking to pastors from our sending church about how we should process all this and how do we handle these unprecedented times, uh, that it would be best for now, and we're always going to be reevaluating this, to, to heed our government's instructions on avoiding some of these larger gatherings. Um, but that is where we are not going to stop being a church. We're never going to stop seeking to reach, teach, and train. We're never going to stop practicing the one another's that, that the New Testament directs us uh, to. We're never going to stop seeking to reach the lost in our community. Uh, full speed ahead on all of those things. And so a couple things. One, in life groups, talk. If you are in a life group, reach out to your leader to find out what the plan is for this week. I know some have been able to meet in person, some have not been able to. And whatever happens, I mean, we're living in a day now where, and hopefully it's a very, very temporary day where people are talking about this social distancing. And let me promise you, that's not going to become the new norm for our church forever and ever. But if it's necessary for a season, uh, while social distancing, what we want to do is draw closer together than we've ever been. And so one of the things we're going to be utilizing and thanking God for, honestly, is the technology that He has given us uh, to use, right? That we have phones that we can call one another. And I'd encourage you, call somebody today from our church. Encourage them. Talk to each other. Build each other up in the Lord. And even for life groups, we'll, we'll be at some point be prepared at least for the possibility of having to do some of those meetings online. And I would encourage you to check out a couple things like Zoom. Uh, go to zoom.us. You can sign up for a free account or Google Hangouts where we'll be doing some things um, through that where, where we can be face to face. It's through a screen. It's not ideal. It's not as good as, as normal, but it can be so much better than us just sitting at home or, or wherever it might be. So check out some of those technologies because if social distancing physically is something we have to do, well, as a church, that's not something we can do spiritually. We need each other and, and we're going to plan on keeping on encouraging one another. And I pray even more than we ever have that God would even make us more intentional about things that we don't even normally think about. Uh, so that's the plan, and we'll be again, I'll be giving you updates at the beginning of these videos every day. Um, but we also want to talk about God's Word together. And before we get to our revival from the Bible reading, I want to share a passage that's been on my heart, even as I've been praying about, well, how do we process these things? And how do we make decisions about some of the things we're going to do as a church? And if you want to look at it, it's 1 Timothy chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2. And uh, we're going to look at the first six verses together where it says, First of all, then I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for all people, for kings and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. This is good, and it is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all people to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, 
who gave himself as a ransom for all, which is the testimony given at the proper time. Right? I think this, this gives us a lot of direction for how do we respond to something like this as Christians. And I think it's helpful for us to admit and just to raise our hands and say, you know what, I am not a public health expert. And what do I do in the meantime? Well, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pray. And I'm going to pray for our, our national government and our president and all those that are working with him. I'm going to pray for our state government. I'm going to pray for our local governments. I'm going to pray for the school districts. I'm going to pray for all these people making decisions and ask God to give them wisdom. Ask God to give them leadership. And, and maybe if we spent less time sharing all of our own views and more time praying, that would be one of the best things that we could do. And also, the goal for us as Christians, it says, is that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. That in light to a world that's going crazy or is chaotic or is afraid, we should be presenting a totally different picture. And even there's a lot of frustration out there. I mean, I go online and social media and I see it. I see people so angry at how seriously people are taking this coronavirus. And then I scroll down and I see another person so angry at people that aren't taking it seriously enough. And that's where I think as Christians, maybe we should spend less time, you know, just talking about all of our opinions about this and more time living that godly and dignified life. Uh, maybe we spend more time saying, hey, how can I love my family today? How, how can I love my neighbors today? How can I reach out to and serve the people in my church today? Uh, you know, if you're an employee or a business owner, hey, what can I do to adjust my business or work with my business? Or maybe if you're not, hey, what can I do maybe to support a business or something productive and, and helpful in this uncertain time? I, I think these are the ways that we should focus our energy. And then most important, what we see there, let's pray and let's seek opportunities to share the gospel. The truth is we're all going to die. Now, I, I doubt it's, for, for most of us, it's going to be from this coronavirus, right? But the truth is we are all going to die. The wages of sin is, is death. The death rate um, for people alive is 100%. Everybody dies. Are people ready for that? This is the testimony that is given at the proper time. We need to tell people about Jesus. And, and let's seek every opportunity we can to point people to the real hope and the real life that only comes through Jesus Christ. That's our mission. It hasn't changed. Maybe some of the ways we'll do things will change temporarily, hopefully for a few weeks or whatever the time it ends up being. But our mission to spread the good news of Jesus Christ, let's pray for more opportunities to do that than ever. Your neighbors, your coworkers, your family, let's share the good news of Jesus Christ. Now, I want to uh, spend some time going through our, our Bible reading, our revival from the Bible reading program that we're going through together as a church. If you haven't, maybe now's a great time to jump in and read with us, and I'll be giving some commentary on it uh, every day, and I'll put the link in again for you if you haven't, if you don't know wh where is it, you can go online and get the list uh, and, and start reading along with us. But one thing I, I, I really love and even have really appreciated over these last few days about our reading program is that every day we're reading in the Psalms. And that's where I want to start again today. Uh, today we read the second half of Psalm 36, uh, verses 7 through 12. And let me just start with verse 7, where it says, How precious is your steadfast love, O God! The children of mankind take refuge in the shadow of your wings. Wow, how, how amazing is that? God's steadfast love, it, it hasn't changed. And, and the children of man, what should our response be? We continue to look to Him as our refuge. Honestly, we don't look to a full pantry. We don't look to our retirement accounts. We put ourselves under the shelter of His wings. And God's people, what do they do? They feast on the abundance of your house. And you give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the fountain of, light in, of life. In your light do we see light. And then look at verse 10 here. This is a great prayer for, for you to pray for a Christian brother or sister today. Oh, continue your steadfast love to those who know you and your righteousness to the upright in heart. Maybe you know somebody who is sick or maybe you know somebody who is at risk or you know somebody that they're, they're having some economic problems as a result of all this. Get on your knees and pray for them. God, continue your steadfast love 
to those who know you and your righteousness to the upright in heart. God, this person is upright in heart. Be righteous with them. Pour out your steadfast love on them. What a great prayer to pray for somebody today. And what, what a great comfort for all of us in Psalm 36. I also want us to talk about our, the rest of our Old Testament reading, which today was Numbers, Numbers chapter 24 and 25, where we continue the story of the prophet Balaam, who is known for his talking donkey, right? But you remember the gist of the story is he is called to curse the nation of Israel, but all he can do is bless them. And we read the end of that in chapter 24, and we even see, uh, we see uh, even messianic prophecy in there. But I want us to look at chapter 25, because then we see Israel does fall into sin. They fall into idolatry, into Baal worship. And uh, what I want us to understand is what we're going to read as we continue reading through uh, the Old Testament later, what we're going to see is this was also the work of Balaam. Uh, Balaam couldn't curse them. So he came up apparently with another plan, and that was to tempt them. And we need to understand here the idol worship. It's not just that the Israelites were like, hey, idols, sounds like a good idea. No, there was actually some specific sexual temptation that was coming uh, through this idol worship. And that's what enticed many of the people into it was the sexual temptation. And then we see this zealous man, Phineas, you know, in a graphic way, stand up and put a stop to it, right? This is a good reminder for us. And let's just put away everything that's going on, right? There's still a battle going on in all of our hearts. And we might focus on, you know, fear or different things right now. But there's still other temptations that we're going to face right now. Uh, there's, there's sexual temptation that people are going to face today. And we need to respond to it with the zeal of Phineas. We want to be loyal to our God and zealous for the things that He is zealous for and eager to continue to pursue holiness in every area of our lives. So th think through that and even check your own heart today. Even maybe as you've been distracted, is there any way that sin has been allowed to creep into your life? And let's get on our knees and confess it to God. Praise God for the cross and move on from it. In Acts today, we saw the Apostle Paul really appealing to, to Caesar as he talks to the new governor, and that's going to put in a new a new phase of his life. But I want us to end with our, our reading from the Gospel of Matthew, where today we finished up Matthew chapter 22. Matthew 22. And uh, we, we see there another thing that's great for us to remember, where Jesus is asked, hey, what's the greatest commandment? And he answers in Matthew 22, 37 through 40, where he says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. We've talked about how things are, are changing in the world around us. And again, we hope very temporarily. But again, one, another thing that hasn't changed what are we supposed to do as Christians? Love God with everything we've got and love people. And there's no shortage of opportunities for us to do that right now. So again, I'll be coming to you every day and giving updates, uh, even just about some of the logistics and how we're working through things as a church. But we're not going to stop being a church. We're not going to stop loving God. We're not going to stop loving people. We're not going to stop reaching, teaching, and training. We're not going to stop fellowshipping with one another and, and praying for one another and seeking to communicate with one another as much as we you know, can. And we're going to utilize every technology that we can to do that. And we are going to grow, I am confident, through this. And I'm praying that God uses all of this to glorify His name in ways that we've never seen before. And that we would see revival like we've never seen before. So let me close just by praying for that now. God, we come before You. And Lord, even when Jesus taught us to pray, He taught us to pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be Your name. God, lift up your name. Or even as we read, as Charlie read this weekend in Psalm 46, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted in the earth. God, exalt your name. Lift up Jesus Christ. God, as there is a virus going through, in some ways like the, the serpent went through the camp in the, in the Old Testament, like we just talked about, God, may people lift up their eyes and look to Jesus Christ for hope and salvation like they never have before. God, and I pray for everybody in our church. 
God, that we would come together like we never have before. And even though there might be limits on how we can do that physically, God, may we be faithful. May people be in our minds and our hearts and on our phones. And God, just in any way we can to reach out to people, help us to take advantage of these things. God, we we lift it all up to you. You are our God. We love you and we trust you no matter what. And we lift this all up to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, at the very least, I'll see you again tomorrow is the plan, and we'll keep going through the Bible together, and I'll bring you any new updates. And again, even if there's anything that you need, uh, reach out to a life group leader, reach out to somebody in the church. Give us a a call here at the church office, and even that set up where we'll get that call any time of the day, uh, and we would love to help. So we're going to keep getting through this together. We'll see you tomorrow.